Should we be worried about increasing solar activity? Michio Kaku is here with one of the, uh, well, he's obviously the professor. We all know him of theoretical physics. He's also the host of the sci-fi science show on the Science Channel, which is based on his book, Physics of the Impossible. <laughs> professor, should we be worried about these flare-ups? Uh, or, you know, is if, you know, when talking about this this morning, we all kind of agreed it has that Y2K feeling, like it could happen. But if it doesn't, we're going to spend a lot of money for nothing. Hmm. Well, we had a wake-up call just two weeks ago. Giant auroras, northern lights as far as Michigan and Wisconsin. And that's a warm-up, a warm-up for 2012-2013 when we hit the sunspot cycle. Every 11 years, the North Pole and the South Pole of the sun flip, releasing a burst of radiation. But every 100 years or so, a monster tsunami from the sun emerges, which could literally cause trillions of dollars in property damage. 2012, that's a presidential election year. We need to keep that in mind. Um, so, but if, if I'm walking around out there <laughs> yeah, as to whose fault it is, or at least the history, who they'll blame. Uh, so if I'm walking around, if I'm out sunbathing in a Speedo, well, I look like Charles after about five minutes out there. <laughs> Color, anyways. Obviously, I'm not going to look like Charles in a Speedo, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, is it going to really affect us like that? I just went from bad to worse. It could paralyze the economy of the planet Earth. But not from a physical perspective. Physical perspective, yeah. 1859, we had a gigantic solar storm which knocked out telegraph wires back then, 150 years ago. Yeah. If that had happened today, it would knock out almost all our satellites, knock out power stations. There would be food riots around the the country because refrigeration would stop. Airplanes would probably crash with, without radar. It would paralyze the, the planet Earth. Two trillion dollars in property damage. And again, this is a once in a century, once in two centuries storm. The last one was 1859. But we do have them and we have to worry about them. That's a pretty high probability, once in two okay. centuries. Do we get a warning? I mean, is it like, hey, in two hours this happens, in two days this happens, in two weeks this happens? I mean, if the flare takes place, what kind of warning will we have to go to the other side of the earth? And who do you sue? <laughs> the bar, bar, I'll, I'll figure that out. I, I got that. Mark can tell you that I, later. I got that covered. Okay. This is an act of God. Oh, yeah. By the way, Mitchell, you might want to sign a waiver before you leave because Mark has you on his list already. Sir. <laughs> you have now put corporate America on notice. They are responsible for taking preparations. Go ahead, sir. We have virtually no warning. It's like a giant earthquake. You can't predict giant earthquakes. They happen on a scale of once every hundred, two hundred years. That's what we have to worry about. We physicists have been telling Congress we have to reinforce our power stations. We have to have redundancy in our telecommunication systems, our satellites. Several of our satellites apparently have already been knocked out or at least disrupted because of solar flares. The space station has to worry about solar flares. Let's but a giant one, like I said, could wipe out power stations on the Earth, wipe out communications, the Internet, radar, uh, airplane travel. It would be a mess. We'd be thrown back 100 years. But are any steps being taken to... Pre I mean, if, God forbid, this happens? In Congress, there is a bill to pass a paltry $100 million. It's stalled in Congress right now. It's an insurance policy. It, it would cost very little to begin the process of reinforcing our transformers, power stations. And remember, this does happen even periodically. In 2003, in South Africa, 14 power stations were wiped out because a solar flare hit South Africa. In Canada, uh, the city of Quebec was partially paralyzed, uh, again, about 10, uh, 15 years ago because of a solar flare. These things happen, but the monster one is the one that we physicists are worried about. Okay, uh, before I get to you, we've got some breaking news here on mortgage rates. They're falling to their lowest level in decades. But eight time in nine weeks, Freddie Mac says that the average 30-year fixed mortgage is now 4.42 percent. Wow. wow. Uh, before we let you go, Dr. K uh, Professor Kaku, how much uh, would this cost to prevent uh, or, 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 or a guesstimate? Because the president is really enamored with scientists, a lot more than his predecessor. It seems that you can get the message through to the president and do you think it will? You, do you think you can, and how much will it cost us? Well, you know, as part of the stimulus package, this would be chump change to give us a hundred million dollars. A hundred mil. That's your Just number. Just to reinforce power stations. Satellites will take more effort. We have to launch satellites that are reinforced to handle these things. We do you have, have any connections with the White House personally? Uh, not personally. But really? I, again, we. I'm really surprised that you haven't been invited there. You're like one of the top science guys in the country. Maybe um, after the show. <laughs> Listen, we're going to have to let you go. Right. Uh, this is just, uh, I, it's frightening stuff, but it's also things that we should be aware of. And coming from you, you add a lot of credibility to it. All right.